Hi everybody, hope you're having a great day today. Thank you for clicking on the video. So what I'm gonna to do today is I'm gonna fly the Skydio 2 again, but I'm gonna use the Beacon. Now this is the second time that I've used the Beacon. I used it the other day and I got some really great footage, at least I thought, but I had one of the settings incorrect. So I'll talk about that in just a little bit because it's a pretty useful tip. But anyway, I'm gonna show you how the Beacon works today. Now I will tell you that if you are getting the Skydio 2 or if you're gonna order it in the future, the beacon is a definite must if you're gonna be doing any kind of sports videography of any kind because it extends the range, it just makes everything more fun, more accurate and things like that. So if you're just gonna be getting cinematic footage of uh, you know, just landscapes or anything like that, the controller is probably gonna work for you. Now, I tried the controller for a few days and it's okay, it's not my favorite thing, but I can understand there is a use for it. So if you wanna watch my first experience of flying my Skydio 2, go ahead and watch this video right up here. Today I'm gonna to show you everything about the Beacon and how it works. So let's get into it. Hi everyone, thanks for coming back to the channel. If this happens to be your first time here, my name is Russ and this is 51 Drones. On this channel, you're gonna find all kinds of content about drones, related technology, and product reviews and stuff like that. So go ahead and check out the channel, watch some of my videos, and if you find anything of interest or value, click on the subscribe button as well as the notification bell. So the Skydio 2, I've been flying it for about a week now and it is impressing me each time that I fly it. But one of the things, it's kind of a, trial by fire with this thing because there's some information on there, you know, some basic information on how to fly it, but a lot of the details aren't out there yet. And the reason is a lot of people did not get this drone in advance to review it. And that's both good and bad. It's good because every, every reviewer, almost every review that you're gonna watch on this drone is from people who have paid for it, they've waited for it, and they're experiencing it as an everyday person. You know, instead of relying on you know, 20 or 30 other influencers that have been flying it for two months, you're seeing it from a real person's perspective. Not saying that influencers aren't real people, but you know what I mean. A lot of people get other drones for free as part of their marketing campaign, but Skydio didn't do that. They only sent it out to a few people, you know, some people that are in their close circle. So there's still a lot to learn out there about this drone. And so I've just kind of been learning as I go. And so I've made some mistakes with it. One of the mistakes is when I used the beacon the other day to get some footage with the Skydio 2, you can either set your Skydio 2 to auto record or hit the record button to record your footage. Well, when you're using the phone, when you're using your mobile device, and if you set it to uh, where you have to actually press the record button and then you turn off your Skydio, and then the next time you use the beacon, it defaults to whatever you had it set at the last time you had the app open. So I had the app open and I had was I was recording by just hitting the record button instead of having auto record on. And so I flew around for two batteries and got some pretty good footage, but none of it recorded because I didn't have it set to audio rec auto record when I turned it off the previous time. So there's a tip for you. You know, if you're getting this drone or if you're hoping to get it soon, just make sure that if you're gonna use the beacon, that you go in with the app on your mobile device and make sure it's set to auto record. So as soon as the Skydio 2 launches, it's gonna start recording. Okay, so basically what I wanna show you on the beacon today is number one, the difference between fixed tracking and motion tracking, because I didn't really understand that. And then I'll show you the other things that uh, that the beacon is useful for. So let's get it up in the air. I'm gonna switch over to the Osmo Action right now. So the audio isn't gonna be quite as good, but it's gonna give me some better perspective for you to see the, uh, the beacon here. So let's get it up. So we're just waiting for it to connect and there it is connected to the beacon. Might have to hold this back a little bit so it's in focus. It does take a little bit of time for the beacon to connect and to get the GPS signal. Um, actually, that, that was pretty quick. All right, to get it going, you're just going to hit the two blue buttons right there. That's going to start the um, autonomous engine. And then you hold the two blue buttons in the middle. Three, two, one, and then it will launch. Okay, let's get out here. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, it's behind me. I'm not sure why. Let's go ahead and just set to, oh, it's on fixed tracking, that's why. So we're gonna go, first I'm gonna show you what motion track is. 
So right now we have it set to motion tracking and we're gonna select that. And now it's set to front. See right there. So it's gonna follow me in the front, but the thing is it doesn't know what the front is until you start moving. So that's what motion tracking is. If you set to position where you, of you, it won't know what front is until you start moving. Once you start moving, it does its calculations and now it gets in front. So I'm gonna switch it over to the right. Let's go front right. It's not gonna move until I start moving. And there we go, front right. And then we'll go over to front left. Now let's go all the way to the left. So there I have it set to left as soon as you start moving. And now it's on my left. All right, so that's how the motion tracking works. Now I'm gonna bring it around to the front. And let's go this way. Just kind of try to trick it a little bit. So now I'm walking this way, it should swing around. And there we go. Still kind of trying to fit, there we go. <laughs> so it takes a little bit of time for it to uh, figure out which direction you're going. Still, there we go. So it does take some time. Okay, so that's the motion tracking. So next, we're going to switch to the fixed track. Now the difference with fixed track, what I thought fixed track was is kind of the same, where if you have the dot, see how the dot is on the top of the circle? Hopefully you can see that. See how the little dot is on the top of the circle? So the drone is right now, it's right there. And that's the set point. So once you have the set point and you push the little button here, it's gonna move relative to the position of that set point. So even if I turn this way and I start walking this way, it's gonna track me from that same angle of the set point. So does that make sense? So let's put it back to the set point, which is there, okay? So now let's go like this. Let's move the drone to this position. Let's go one more this way. So we're now we're at 90 degrees to the set point. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back in, I'm gonna set fixed track, and now that sets this new position as the set point. So anytime you change the arrow, it's gonna move to the direction in rel relativity. <laughs> Sorry. It's gonna move in relation to that set point. So if I go to the left, it's gonna move to the left. So no matter which way you're facing, it's gonna remain in that position to the set point. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> it probably doesn't, but, oh, coming up on a tree, nice. Goes underneath. Very cool. All right, so let's bring it back. Let's go to here. Okay, so when I set the drone set point, it was actually this way, but now you can see on the screen, it's 90 degrees to the set point. So hope that makes sense. Now the last one, actually the next to last one is steering. Now this one, you can only go forwards with it. So you push the blue button, the drone moves forwards. You cannot move backwards with this. So what you have to do, get it away from me here, it's kind of loud. I haven't figured out if you can fly backwards with the steering. I don't think you can. Um, if you can, I haven't figured it out yet. If you know, just comment down below and let me know. But the steering, you can only rotate it and move forward. Okay, so let's have it just follow us. So actually this doesn't follow you. This is just gonna fly as long as you're pushing the button. Okay, so let's have it rotate back around. Okay, now the last thing that I wanna show you is the magic wand. Now, when we were watching some of the uh, release, pre-release videos, the magic wand was pretty cool, and that's where you can point in the direction you want the drone to move. So you hold these two blue buttons, 
point it at the Skydio and then pull it over. Oops, I think I have to have it out of steering mode. So push the red button. Let's go over to fix tracking, select. Okay, so now we have set the fixed point. So we can either use the arrows, the two little arrows to change our position of the drone. Or if you hold the two blue buttons and then point in the direction that you want it to go, it goes in that direction. Start here, drag it there. Very cool. Let's bring it down and to the left. And then let's bring it all the way around to this side. <laughs> oh, that is so, so cool. Let's bring it down. Oh, took a while here. There we go. Sometimes you got to get it right on the drone. Oh, I'm pushing the arrow with my fat glove. That's what's going on. <laughs> all right, let's try that again. Down to the left. <laughs> that is just, this is just so cool, you guys. And then the plus and the minus is going to change um, your distance away from you. So if you press the minus, it's going to bring you closer. So that decreases the distance. And if you press the plus button and hold it, that's going to increase your distance. Okay. So let's drag it up. all the while keeping you in the frame. All right, so there you have it. There's the Skydio 2 Beacon. <laughs> I, think, I think the car is scared to come over here. All right, there's a tree going around it. Very cool. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and land and then I'll finish up on the Sony over here. All right, so there is the beacon for the Skydio 2. I definitely think this is the best part of the drone. Like I said, if you're gonna be getting the Skydio 2 or if you have it and you haven't ordered the beacon, I do recommend it if you're gonna be doing any kind of motion tracking at all. And probably you are because that's why you bought the Skydio 2. So the beacon makes it so much better. It makes it so much more fun. Yes, the controller, most of us are used to flying with the controller, but the Beacon is a whole new experience. I still have a little bit to learn about it, I think. Like for the steering mode, I th there should be a way to fly it backwards, but maybe not. But if you know, let me know down in the comments and we'll pass it on to the viewers so they know. But uh, I really, really enjoy the Beacon, especially the magic wand thing where you just hold it and then point to where you want it to go. That is super, super cool. So. Anyway, if you have any questions about the Beacon, about the Skydio 2 or at all, let me know down in the comments and I'll do my best to get to all of them. I'm going to be making a lot more videos on the Skydio 2, so be sure to subscribe if you're not a part of this community already. I really appreciate it. Hit the thumbs up if I gave you anything of value today. I want to thank you for watching. Happy Holidays, Merry Christmas. However you celebrate this time of year, it is the best time of the year, so spend some quality time with your friends and family. Have a great day, everyone. Fly safe and fly smart.